longtime Weekly 50 readers and viewers, I guess, if you're watching this on YouTube, will know that one of my favorite places to take photos is Theta Pond at the OSU campus, Oklahoma State University, for those not in Oklahoma. There's always something interesting to take a photo of down there, even... I mean, it almost doesn't matter what time of year. Yes, it's an artificial man-made pond, but all of this, all of the elements of the pond are real. Like there's real trees, real animals, um, real people. <laughs> it's it's a it's very much a place of of calm and nature, despite the artificial nature of it. It's it's just a great place to go for a short walk and just look around, sit for a minute, and in my case, take some photos. And that's what I did here. I was walking around the pond and I noticed that there were no bright colors like you might see in springtime. There was no flowers and, and other like bright yellows and oranges and reds. But what I did see was a lot of what you see here. There's color in this photo, just not traditional color in the way that you might think of nature, like a live colors. There's browns and yellows, and there's a, a bit of a green from a leaf that hasn't quite turned brown yet. So the colors are really different. But what attracted me to this scene here was how this leaf, this, I believe it's a maple leaf, I don't know, it was floating just below the surface. I'm talking like a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch below the surface. And it almost looks like it's on ice. Like if you didn't know that this was water, you might even think this is ice. And it made for this really cool element, like this leaf was just like caught in time. And it's it like it's frozen in this in this chunk of ice, even though it's very clearly not if you if you were there in person. Like the water is actually slowly circling around as the pond moves, but it looks cool. It has this appearance to it. Oh, it's almost like an artificial appearance. Like it it's it was it, it like frozen in amber, like in the Jurassic Park movies. And this is also one of those times when having a macro lens doesn't mean you have to take photos super super up close. Like I was it's a big leaf and I, I wasn't super close to it, but that macro lens allowed me to focus at any distance I wanted, whether it was close or far and still get a really, really short photo. I also be careful for depth of field. I shot this at F 9.5. And again, I was, I was pretty far away, like, I don't know, two feet away. And even then F 9.5 was still like, I was in danger of getting a depth of field that was a little too shallow, but it's something I've really tried to work on as I've shot more macro photos is controlling that depth of field and sometimes it's fun to shoot with a much larger aperture, but then your depth of field is super unwieldy. There's another thing I like about this photo, which is a bit different than the how I traditionally shoot photos. Normally, I like a, a clear subject with a background and maybe a little bit of foreground. But here, uh, everything sort of occupies the same planar space. Like there's there's not like a big distance between the foreground and background. But what you have, though, is layers. And there's a layer of... Uh, needles, like I think those are from a, a cypress tree on the surface. And then below that, if you can imagine like three separate planes going away from you, there's the the top or the, the foremost plane with those cypress needles. And then the middle is this brown leaf. And in the back, you have these other leaves, like that green leaf, which you can tell is beneath that's like the the farthest back, even though it's it's not really that deep in the water, it's still the farthest back. So you have this this sense of three dimensionality and these layers to this photo that are really distinct from one another, yet pretty close physically and in, in physical proximity. So it it's all of this together combines to create a really cool scene that I had a lot of fun photographing.